Hello, everyone. Hey, is it working? Yeah, it's working. Nice. Oh my god, my glasses are so shiny. So I broke my glasses. So I have some replacements, like emergency ones. They are, they are so reflective, so you're just gonna see my eyes super white, reflective like that. <laughs> All right, so um, welcome everyone, welcome. I hope you're ready. So let me see what I have. Let me see what I have. Okay. So we got a track by uh, Matt DeGuay to start with. Can you all hear me just to check? Oh yeah, I heard of that, uh, the guy who streamed from the reflection of his glasses. <laughs> hey, okay, that's great. So, let's get going. Hello, hello. So, Mathieu de Guay sent me this track. Let's see what's going on there. Let me balance with my voice so the volumes are fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, before I start, if you want to have your track reviewed, in the description you have a link. You can send a 3 euro donation and attach a direct download link to your track and I will see it. Hey Tom, what's up? Okay, so let's talk about that. First. So I think that to begin with, the the low booms here are a little bit quiet. Like you can't really feel any kind of low boominess. I mean, you can, but... I would make them just a tiny bit deeper, a few dB deeper. Not this one, this one is fine, just the first one, I guess. It's a minor thing, doesn't really matter, actually, never mind. It's just maybe just a tiny bit deeper. Uh, that's not really important. What's more important is... the EQs on these sustained sounds. Um, so, I feel like... the main pad, the one that goes like... it's a bit too harsh, and it makes the track feel a little bit... bit um, Around here. I think you could get like just a smoother turn um, if you cut a bit around here on this main pad. You can probably hear the, the nasty frequency. Just a nicer turn if you cut down the, this pad. Um, and then after that there is another pad that's a bit too high mid forward and you just kind of lose some depth and it becomes a bit uh, I would say a bit too intense for the intro, just uh, not the prettiest turn. Like if you want a bright pad, it's fine, but I think you can get a better turn if you cut some high mids. Like oh, all this noise around 4k. 
You get what I mean? It's not, I'm not complaining about the high treble, but it's more like the, the high mids. Just make it a bit more lush and airy by cutting this high mids. And this bright sound. And then... That's a bit muddy, and these hits here kind of lack some sub, and they feel like they have some, like a lot of high bass, like some hundred. But it's kind of not very defined, it's a bit like muddy, and you don't really feel a, a deepness to them. So maybe make sure they have a more of a bottom end. And just maybe less of this frequency, so it's less like, you know. And maybe make, if you could uh, make the definition better, like maybe you have some reverb going on in those hits, somehow shaping them, um, like sh somehow having a more defined uh, thump, basically, just less overlap kind of between the, the delay of the thumps, if you know what I mean, like the dun dun dun. It feels like it's a bit blurry, like whoa. it's not like boom boom, you know, but like more boom boom, less whoa. Um. And then... So I can't really feel the, the impact on these, these hits here. It's just too light, there is not enough of a dynamic difference between these hits and the rest of the song, so you end up with like a kind of a soft hit that doesn't really have, a, you know, any impact to it. You need to make sure it punches a little more, basically. Uh, the violin here is just way too, too close. I would say it's both a combination of volume and high EQ. It's a bit too close sounding and kind of jumps out of the mix because of that. The violin on the, on the left. It's just too thin compared to the, the rest. It is jumping around in the treble. These big hits here, they should be like slams, but they're very kind of light. And they're kind of lost in the... in everything. Same for the transitional hits here. They, they, they're kind of lost in the riser and don't have enough of uh, impact to them. And just wait a second. Um, uh, Frederick, if you want to donate uh, in that page, so in the link in the description, you have uh, you can both pay with credit card or PayPal. So you put the number, uh, so three euro minimum. You put the link in your message box, and then if you click next, you will have an option to use PayPal or a uh, card. It's a uh, it's a system. So the climax. Let's see. Because there is more stuff, it's less of a problem, uh, the small violin. It's not poking as much as it used to. Uh, but now the issue is really the hits, uh, they don't really punch enough. The track feels a bit washy, wishy-washy in the mid-range. It doesn't have any kind of defined bottom end. Uh, the driving jumps are kind of good. They have a nice tone. But like the biggest issue is definitely the main hits because they don't really punch. Uh, 
uh, the choir sounds a bit too wide. Did you put a stereo enhancer or any stereo widener on this? It sounds a bit fake and out of the space. Like you can feel the choir is like a um, weird dimensionality because it's too wide. So there is something going on here. Here, like even the drums are lost, so you should automate the driving drums so that you can still hear them punching through that section. Even the driving drums and the hits are even more lost in everything. Uh, you have a kind of a, kind of a high kind of lead synth or something. So either it's like trumpets phasing or it's like a high synth. If it's a high synth, it needs to be a bit more noticeable in my opinion because it's like a new element. It's a bit thin and the treble heavy right now. I would make sure it has a bit more mid-range and it's like more audible, not just in the treble region, but a bit everywhere, a bit more audible everywhere. Oh, it's definitely a synth, actually. It's not a trumpet. Uh, phasing. It's a synth. Um, that's good, I like this synth, but it just needs to be a bit less treble heavy, a bit fatter. So it just has more tone, you know, so no more things to hear in it. And yeah, just more, more definition in the hits and everything, and uh, a bit more bass and less kind of mid-range washiness. For the, I think for the synth, you just need to EQ it a bit, maybe remove some of the highest treble. That reminds me of a track by Bergerson, I think, uh, like from the, uh, there is an album he made like a synth lead at some point or so. It was like a long track, I forgot which track. It's, it's kind of fun sounding. It likes a bit of bass, kind of a boom here. Like more of like an impact boom kind of thing. And there is compression on this one. You can feel the compression. It's a bit weird, it's way too much compression. Somehow the, the low boom sounds a bit choked. Make sure you don't compress this too much or at all. Just a couple dB. Yeah, just don't use any stereo enhancers. I'm thinking there is some kind of stereo enhancers going on here, and the stereo image is a little bit odd. But uh, other than that, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. All right. Um, let's see what I have. So I got a track by Blue Moon Score now. Right. Let's see. Might skip a bit because it's really long, but uh, when I skip, by the way, I always try to check all the important moments so I, I don't miss anything worth talking about. Awesome, Mathieu. Glad this helps. Oh, hey, William, by the way.
some a few things are a bit odd in the bass. Uh, that's that's more like a MIDI mockup type of thing. But uh, see the double basses here. It's a bit weird that they are like you, you, you mostly start hearing them around there. Doom. But but make sure you hear the double basses kind of all the way through. I think it would be it would be nicer. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I um, I just use uh, stereo enhancers and the master mostly, like very rarely in the mix, but uh, like five percent, three percent, you know. And not on all tracks, just on some tracks actually. I think the voicing of the strings here could be a bit better, so it's not necessarily just mixing, but the the way you write the bass lines here. Like the, the which note each string instrument is playing, I think it's like the bass lines are a bit odd sounding. For example, the here it finishes on the dun, whereas the more logical bass line for the for the melody would be dun. I mean, of course, there is some taste can, kind of thing going on, but uh, I think you can get, you could get a bigger sound by having kind of better voicings. So something to see in the strings. I think here it's a bit clashing. The, there, there's a clash in the harmony. There is like a, two, a semitone kind of interval. You need to see the, what's going on here. And, and see here you kind of lose the bass. Which is fine, maybe, but then at the end you might want to add uh, uh, the bass again. Dun, 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 dun. And then you could have... Dun. I can't sing it, but you could have kind of a warm bass coming in for the final chord. You know what I mean? Just kind of having a bit more... You know. Because if you had some big kind of bass before, it, it's kind of weird that the, the finishing chord of the sequence wouldn't have bass. And stuff like that. It's, it's more arrangement type of things, but... The, the tone of the strings overall is okay. Although I feel like the, the, the bass is too quiet overall, like whenever there is bass, it's uh, here, it's, it's kind of nice here, the bass. Actually, it's really nice. These chords are very well, very correct. Like, nothing wrong with these chords. It's just the volume of the bass is a bit low here. So you're getting a bit too much violins and violas and stuff. Regarding the overall tone of the strings, maybe you could change the EQ a bit on the strings bus. Um, See, in, in the high mids, you have a bit of um, forwardness here around 2 or 3k, which is maybe maybe not ideal for the kind of mood you're trying to create. So what you could do is uh, cut a bit on here. It would be more silky. That's that's possible. Maybe not as much, but uh, it's a matter of taste also. But you could do some of that. Um, I need the strings, strings. Yeah, see, see, as you get more intense violins, um, as you get more intense violins, it gets a bit even harsher. So that cut could definitely make things a bit better here. Oh, it's all strings. Okay. Yeah, see here that, that cut would be more beneficial, so you could just do that on the violins if you want, or like do that in the bus, but do even more on the violins just themselves as well around here. Like like do like 2db or 3db on the violins and then 3db in the bus or something. Let's see, see why you want to stop the cut, because it's a matter of taste too, but... Uh Uh, 
again, the bass fe feels too weak. It is more like it. But uh, use volume of the bass. This is a piano. Yeah, overall these passages are really nice. Uh, it's just the voicings here a bit in the, in the beginning. But this is really like chill sounding, I like this. Piano is fine. Maybe a bit nasal. What you can do is uh, EQ a bit there. Right? That it's kind of the nasal range, and you can make the piano more warm and kind of uh, grandiose sounding. More intimate sounding. Don't, don't boost the noise, so don't boost. See? It's a bit, bit softer, bit... bit um, less nasal, so that's nice. That's pretty much, pretty much it. You could pan a bit more, everything sounds a bit centered. Uh, don't pan too much until it's disjointed, but for example, the. Especially the Chilean bass, uh, all that low string stuff is a bit centered, so pan it maybe uh, just nudge it a bit to the right and uh, the violins maybe a bit to the left. Make sure it's symmetrical. Uh, violins can often sound um, like more directional than the basses. But yeah, it's just like little adjustments like that, but overall, uh, it's nice. All right. Cool. Um, let's see the next one. So we have Tom Hawk with a track. Oh, nice. Avengers theme mock-up. That's going to be interesting to see. Right.
So that's pretty nice. I think um, the main thing that stood out to me is the levels. I feel like the levels are a bit off. Um, so the trumpets and horns. The chili shouldn't be that r that loud on the right compared to these horns and trumpets. Like the, the violins are too loud. I think it's just like the strings overall are a bit too loud for this brass. Um, I don't know if the, that's the default volume or nucleus, but uh, it sounds is a bit wrong. Like it, the, the brass is louder. Like. You don't, you don't want to make the brass as loud as in real life because that's like deafening. <laughs> but uh, I feel like the, the cello are definitely like too audible and the violins as well and kind of goes on top, um, goes on top of the horns and the brass. And here it's fine because there is not too many strings. But... And the low low strings here, I think it's low strings. Could be could be also low brass, some some low brass. And there is some muddiness going on in that low low strings. Right here. So you need to cut a bit here or make sure it's not as muddy. And uh, your low ostinato strings. Resonate a bit too much here. See, if I cut there, it's already... constant resonances that you can kind of hear. Uh, so that's due to the low low strings and uh, some resona resonating things. <laughs> Guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like to, to go into detail. I guess the same thing, like if there is more, I, start, I try to start with the more important issues first and then go into the EQ stuff. Uh, but actually, there is something also kind of bothering me overall with this. So after I finish with the EQs, I will talk about that. So the strings feel a bit too overhyped in the high end. I think it's just too sharp, and that's also making them too close and dry feeling. So I think you overdid the EQ a bit as well on the on the treble on the strings. Feels a bit too sharp. Almost a bit synthy on the violins. And you should leave that a bit more to the brass buzziness. Uh, it's a bit too harsh, a bit too forward sounding. Um, but I think turning down the strings overall will also help uh, because it will be less noticeable. So, but definitely need a bit less high end from that. And uh, the other thing that's bothering me is the panning. I think you panned a bit too much and you're losing some stereo fields because um, the thing is, as you pan, you narrow the stereo field. It's just a side effect. So if you pan too much, you kind of destroy the room in the samples a bit. So what you need to do is like either use a plugin like Precedence to keep more stereo image or like when panning, or just use balance panning, not true stereo panning. Make sure you use the balance panning, which is just changing the levels between the left and the right. Uh, I made a video on this. Uh, I want, it's one of the mixed tip videos. So if you use balance panning, that way you, you kind of maximize the stereo field that you keep and you don't kind of collapse the channels together on one side. So panning less would leave more room and maybe potentially a bit more reverb um, depending on how dry or wet you want it but uh, reverb can also add in back some room and kind of coherence in the stereo field as you add back more reverb so it's a possibility but all, all of these things could make the thing more glued together sounding but yeah i think that's pretty much it um <clears throat> Yeah, it's just a little bit too processed feeling, I would say, and, and the levels between the strings and the brass. 
All right, so next mix, um, Jonathan Carrier. Let's see what he sent. Okay. It's already mastered, seems like it. the choir. Don't worry about the choir. Um. I, like I like the groove. Boom, 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 boom. The groove is a bit weird here, like what happened? Maybe it's a... it's not overlapping, is it? I feel like the tracks are overlapping. It feels like weirdly syncopated. You need to see what's uh, going on. You, you should probably stick to the same groove that you started with, even, even there. It's too... it feels... It feels like it's rushing weirdly. See, maybe for an outro like that it would be fine. But the way it's suddenly introduced uh, is just too weird. The way transitions here, you, you can't transition the rhythm like that, is uh, way too shocking, so... And um, even the rhythm itself, the, the, rhythm to, the rhythm to which it switches to is just not like, kind of compatible. It's hard to explain, but it's not compatible with what you wrote before that. It's like you put the accents on different beats, right? So it's like super shocking. Um, that could be like, if you make like a kind of a big transition and just put that in its own part, after it could work maybe, but not as like a continuity of the main thing. Um, 
So regarding the mix, actually I'm going to talk about the composition because I have to talk about the composition for the mix for this one. And I, I want to start talking more about the composition because it's really important for mixing. Uh, I think that regarding the harmony of role and like the, the chords and voicings of everything, you're not having enough voice, like enough big chords because the thing is it feels a bit too thin, uh, especially within this first part here. Especially around here. See, you, you hear the theme, dun, 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 dun. but but you don't hear the harmony. So you should hear like um, at least like a triad chord, you know, like a full triad triad chord with all the voices kind of balanced with each other and a strong bass line just to balance out the melody. Like the dun, bass line, this should be way more audible, and then the note in between, so like. Dun, dun, dun. And you should be able to feel that uh, across like a good amount of instruments because uh, considering all the drums you have, which by the way are too loud, uh, you should you should hear the harmony much fuller under these drums. Otherwise, it feels like the drums are just kind of. It feels like the piece is like not very tonal and it's more like a percussion piece, right? But you're trying to go kind of full orchestra on this, so you should really have a bigger sounding harmony. <laughs> It's lacking the bass line, uh, particularly the bass line, sustained bass line. It's just too discreet. Uh, and rega regarding the um, percussion and the hits, it's just too loud compared to the sustained elements. So you end up with something that's a bit... Like the thump, the quality of the thump itself is very good. It's punchy, it's good, but uh, you don't need to make it that loud for it to punch through. So as you lower the the hits you're just gonna get more chords and more tonality and more harmony and that's kind of what you need right now because it's too it's too punchy <laughs> just an example here uh, under the choir i'm not feeling big enough like brass chords dun, 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 dun. I like whatever voicings you want to do, but like, you need like some big brass chords. It's also a volume issue, the brass is a bit quiet there. But some voicings need to be made better, and the volumes need to be... Like the, the volume of the sustained elements overall needs to be more than the percussion, than it is right now. Um, what else? Um, that's really quiet. The intro might be a little bit too quiet compared to the, to the volume of everything else, but as you lower the percussion, it should kind of bring the dynamic range a bit closer together. Uh, the choir. It's a bit harsh and thin. Uh, you could cut a bit there. And also lower it a bit in volume, but it doesn't it doesn't need a bit less of this frequency anyway for the tone of it. You see here the voicings could be made a bit more clear. There is a bit of confusion going on in the harmony. And then like, I'm, I'm not hearing the doom strong enough, you know what I mean? Bass line. Stuff like that. Like, it's like... It's like there is a bit of a dissonance there that's not necessary. Like, you have like... Dun, dun, playing at the same time. So it's a bit confused, right? Um, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think once you fix these issues, it's gonna be like a really catchy track. Uh, but it needs a bit, a bit more work. But like the the punch itself is so good, it's just too much punch. 
Uh, but uh, it's nice to see a punch like that because in quite often it's just too, like drums can be too, you know, uh, blurry sounding, just not punchy enough. But this one is definitely punchy. Right, so the last, the next one by Frederick Park. Let's see. But I, I know that lots of these are work in progress, so don't worry. Like, I'm not, you know, I know that you guys see lots of things to fix as well. It's all work in progress stuff for the most part. <clears throat> all right, so. You can put more reverb, uh, more reverb on the piano notes here, right at the beginning. I like the super wet Brahms uh, strings, what are these? I'm not even sure what this is. It's so wet, I can't really tell what it is, but it sounds cool. So the little strings you have coming under here, yeah, they're a bit too drowned by the rams or whatever this is. So I think you could get them coming up a bit more audible here. Like dun, dun, dun. Whatever you have playing behind this should be a bit louder. There's some trombone chords, I think, behind this. Same here, the horns could be a bit louder, so it's not like uh, as drowned. It feels like it's more building up and you don't get too much of this constant kind of washy sound all the time. Like it's fine, I like it, but I think you should have like the other elements kind of coming up a bit more clearly so it's not as drowned. Uh, the horn, same, could be a bit louder. Uh, the horn, you could cut a bit of mid range, so it's a bit less honky. Here for the horn. So, when it comes to this part here, it's important that the bass is like it really starts being defined sounding and kind of kicks in. So What you should listen to is uh, the Doom soundtrack uh, by Mick Gordon. Just go listen to the Doom soundtrack because he has like a driving kind of bassline synth that's just like that. And uh, you will see that he's very more defined and kind of more plucky in the bass. So if you could get it a bit like tighter and kind of bigger sounding in the bass, go listen to the Doom 2016 OST. You, you will hear some driving kind of do -do 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 synth like that. And right now it's just kind of too washy, lost in the middle of other stuff, or right? it should be a bit more plucky and bassy and kind of driving. And there is a sound that's kind of creating some mud as well within this. I think it's low strings. Dun 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 dun. this it's 
bit muddy. See if you have too much reverb on that. Like, don't make, make sure the the bass is not reverb. Make sure you filter your reverb your reverbs so it's not like uh, adding blur to the low end. Same for the horns, a bit too honky, so EQ the horns down. Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, our bass is... The high end and that, and that swell is a bit too much. Uh, it feels a little bit too, too bright. I don't know about the stereo field on all these effects. I feel like you just put too much wider now, and it's like the stereo field is a bit too wide, and it's not as defined as it could be. So it feels like everything is kind of everywhere and a bit too wide. Like uh, this brown kind of thing, a bit too wide and. Uh, you could kind of have it a bit a bit quieter and one slightly on the left and the other effect slightly on the right so it's more a bit like more coherent stereo wise and just less wide everywhere and, and the bass line also the main driving bass line here could be a bit narrow so it's not also taking the whole space it feels very stereo enhanced which is a bit uh, too much if everything is wide basically you don't really have contrast anymore You could put that, it sounds like that a bit on the right, like the, the screech and the other screech on the drum on the left. Yeah, Salim, but in that situation, it's not that, uh, like, he doesn't pan too much. I guess not like Tom's piece. Tom's piece, he pan too much, and that made all the instruments kind of narrow sounding and not in a space anymore. Here, it's more like everything is too wide, so you don't really feel much panning at all because it's everywhere. It's, it feels like very 2D and close to you because of the width. And you don't get a 3D effect of having more positioning. So you want more positioning, less 2D flat in front of you feel due to the width basically same that that, that razor is too too wide the string is the stereo field is a bit odd it's like it's panned but also too wide at the same time oh, all the brass is too honky to be like heavier and like uh, lower and less of that honkiness and you could have some low brass make sure you have like a tuba or something under this so it's like fat or something The issues here are mostly just the horn being too mid-rangey. Again, uh, there is a high kind of trebly sound that's too, way too harsh and kind of distracting. You need to remove that. Like fil filter this quite a lot on that sound itself, so it's like less poking through. And uh, also it, it, needs, it needs more bass.
and like less bass rumble and more definition. Make sure you check what instruments you have that have bass, but it's not really like bass that's adding anything. And uh, make sure like, it's like more constant rumble here. Make sure you cut the rumble here from some stuff so that the drums are more the only thing here, uh, more or less. Of course, you have the bass lines here, but like just the bass line instruments and the drums. So it's like cleaner on the bass that way and uh, more bass overall compared to the mid range. And also it's probably a little crushed. Uh, that could be why it's a bit kind of blurry sounding. Like I'm not sure exactly how much limiting that is. But like the, the hits don't punch enough. Like it's the, the drums, uh, the, the horns mid range is just too much and the hits don't punch enough. So that could be also too much limiting among other things. Definitely sound a bit crushed here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's limiting. Uh, yeah. But uh, there is also too much mid range compared to the bass, which is also making the drums weaker. So, on top of the limiting issue, there is uh, that as well. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Right. Um. Okay. Let's see. Got something again from Blue Man's call. Let's see. Dun -dun -dun. Uh, explaining punch. So punch is like, um, it's how much you feel the drums in the bass. So how much you feel the drums coming through in the bass. So n if you just solo the bass range, no punch would sound like whoa, and punch would sound like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> why am I barking in the mic? Uh, but it's just like more, more basically dynamic range in the bass. So you, you feel like a thump in your chest like with pickles, you know, when it's punchy. <laughs> That's what this means. I'm just woofing in the mic. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, transience. Transience is just attack in general. And uh, but I mean, you have bass transience, you have treble transience. Punch is more like targeted to the bass transience. Wait, so far this sounds this sounds like a Borderlands soundtrack. I'm playing Borderlands right now. This sounds like Borderlands or something. With the guitars. It literally sounds like the Borderlands 2 theme. I think. Just 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 this part. Okay, doesn't sound like it anymore here, but before, yeah. Yeah, you should, you should check it out. Just check out Borderlands 2, you'll see. It's, it's kind of cool, similar. Okay, so let's talk about this part first. I'm 
is probably a bit too resonant here. Just cut a little bit. Um. So, bit muddy, mud, bit muddy here. Around here. I'm gonna cut a little bit on the guitar and bass. Like the piano, I, I don't know, you have several layers. But whatever is causing the most uh, 200 could be several things. Oh, that constant pad is a bit too loud. So you could lower that a bit overall throughout this thing. The guitar here. Dun, dun, dun. The, the half the guitar. Um, yeah, 200 hertz, yeah. So the, the arpeggio guitar kind of thing. This is one of the layers that sounds too close and like doesn't have much room. It, it kind of jumps out of, of the mix. I'm not sure it's a guitar, but it's like. You know what I mean, right? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this this instrument. So it's a bit like a guitar, but it sounds uh, like a piano guitar. It's kind of weird. It's a guitar, okay? Yeah. It, yeah, really low guitar, right? I was a bit thrown off. Um, it's just a bit too close to so maybe add some reverb to this, just make it a bit far away, more far away, so it's more atmospheric. Also cut a bit the nasalness here. Yeah, maybe it's layered. There is definitely a piano here, but... They just get yeah, a bit too nasal and a bit too dry. And then... Like the, the distortion kind of high-end thing that you got here, make it more obvious. Like, don't have it or make it more obvious. Like, com commit to it or, or make or cut it. It's a bit, a bit too much uh, in the kind of, I don't know if it's intentional kind of area. So the, the, dri the driving drums are too quiet, the dun 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 dun, so they're a bit too kind of muffled. And bassy, but it kind of lacks some other frequencies, right, to really punch through. So either like layer them or filter them less, or just make the driving drums have a bit more character, basically. And when it comes to the bass line here, it's a bit dark. So the bass line is kind of a really important element in this part. So what you want to do is uh, saturate it if you don't have enough frequency or EQ it. Just get more. Like, get more tone out of the bass. Uh, usually saturation works good. Um, let, me, let, me, let me see if we can do it. So 
It's not gonna walk because you just need to do this on the base, but. Basically, you create more harmonics for the bass to be just like kind of more gnarly sounding, just have more character to it. It's not gonna work on the whole mix, but. If you just create more mid range in the bass, the bass will just sound that much bigger without having more bass. That's the point of saturating it. Like, I mean, you will hear more of the bass without actually having more low end. That's the point of saturation. So here you got the melody pad thing that's just too muddy in the mid range. So whatever is doing this, it's just kind of overshadowing the mix, the, the other instruments. It's only there, it seems. Also there a bit. Oh. I muted myself before I sneezed. I saved your ears. Um. Yeah. Okay, so let's see this. Thank you, thank you. It's saved. Are a bit honky though. Like, I think the guitars are honky around the, the like 800. Or like, or like 600. If you can cut the guitars a bit there. Get a nice odd tone on the organ. You cut a bit there. Boost a bit there. Just a little bit, a little bit harsh. The violin is a bit close sounding, maybe. you have an arrangement issue in this part. Um, you can hear the melodies are very prominent, but you don't have enough harmony to just kind of counter this melody. So you want the melody to be heard, but you want also a bass line and harmony to balance it and counter it to some degree. You have a plucky bass line doing eighth notes, but it's just not enough. Okay, there is some bright, bright kind of melody stuff in the violin, and it's just too much compared to the Baseline. So the high mids and kind of mid range and melody elements are just. And you don't hear that baseline loud enough. So you have to rebalance the voices. Maybe a bit more of a build up on the organ here in automation very end. Yep. That's what I did. Um, right, so next track is by uh, by Colin Brevka.
I got your track. Okay. I can repeat the part, really. Oh, thank you. I would have done it anyways. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Not that mean. Am I? Okay, let's listen to it. So the pad you have in the background here is just too wide and it feels overly stereo enhanced. And uh, if you listen with, with speakers, actually, all this stereo enhancing stuff I'm talking about is probably not as bad on speakers because uh, with speakers, you get some early reflections from your own room and it's like less obvious how wide something is. But uh, if you check with headphones or with like, a, what's it called, a correlation meter, you notice instantly like this weird kind of 2D width and you can't go too far on this so it just pops out of the space and it feels very like one dimensional once you go too far with the stereo enhancers. Okay, Blumont, thank you. Uh, yeah, have a, have a good one. Uh, yeah, so what I was uh, saying, um, yeah, if you listen with headphones, you will notice this weird width with speakers less obvious and you can easily go too far on uh, it's funny, like people say you need speakers for the stereo image. Um, yeah, but uh, it's just as important to check on headphones because speakers, you get a stereo image, so, but you get a messed up stereo image with all the reflections of your room. Sure, you get kind of the blend of the two channels, uh, left and right. That's true. So it gives a different representation of the stereo image. But uh, headphones also give a very interesting perspective because the left and right channels are isolated. It's a lot more obvious to hear phase issues because you really feel the phase issues between your two ears. Um, like I think like other engineers that just swear by speakers, they, 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 they swear way too much by speakers. Headphones are just as important. Of course, if you have bad headphones, you can have worse of a frequency response because uh, bad headphones will have uh, tons of peaks and just it will be messed up and it won't be as good as monitors in the great room. But with monitors, you don't get the same kind of perspective of width and it's a lot harder to kind of hear separation and weirdness of stereo image, right? So I think ideally you want to have a good pair of headphones and a good pair of monitors. And uh, what you decide to mainly mix on will depend on if you have a treated room or not really. Do you have a good room, use your flat monitors? Uh, and j just check on headphones. If you have a bad room, make some headphones and check on monitors for the bass and other things. But uh, I'm not gonna go into a rant about speakers with these headphones, but I think that's one example that stuff you can miss easily because on monitors, you don't feel the width in the same way. Uh, it's completely different. But monitors give you a better f feeling of bass because you feel it physically, which you can't feel on headphones. So it's like, you know, it's, I would say they're just as useful but it's like there is no medium that's inferior. Like headphones are not inferior to monitors if they're good. Of course, if you have close back headphones, which are like all messed up, it will be worse than monitors. Um, I'm talking like 300 euro plus headphones as good as monitors, uh, flat monitors, or better if your room is not treated, clearly better. And uh, even if you have a treated room with amazing speakers, always check on headphones because you get that separation which you don't get with anything else. Okay, so let's go back to this. Sounds, sounds great. You could potentially add a little bit of treble to that flute, but it is optional. If you want a dark sound on that, a dark sound on the flute, you get a dark sound. It's fine. It's mostly just the pad and the rate that's too wide. And strings could be a bit lush or something. They're a little bit uh, on the aggressive side. I mean, around this frequency. Like the whole track is super lush sounding, so you probably want the strings to be very soft. 
Y tal. You're not gonna see this on any st uh, any spectrum analyzer. Like it's not gonna show. It's just too quiet. But uh, that's the kind of thing you need to be able to hear without a stereo anal uh, spectrum analyzer because it's there. But it's not loud. But it's there in the tone. It's there hiding in the tone. Like if you look at this through a spectrum analyzer, it's gonna look super dark. So that's one of the things that doesn't show. Same here on the strings and brass uh, build up overall. It's just the strings and brass, I think, is just too much of that frequency again. Which just sounds harsh and kind of masks the other stuff. like super good this part of the composition wise it's like whoa it's really interesting oh man if you mix this a bit better like this part so good uh so i think you need to hear the bass movement a lot more here like the, the, the low strings running around, do 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 do, right? It's so important for this. It's a bit too quiet. Um. S same thing, there is like too much of that 2 3k. I think coming also from the drums here. But not just the drums. I think violins and a bit trumpets. So, so you need to figure out like what instruments are just constantly adding harshness, like a bed of harshness to this and just so it opens up the track a bit more and, and uh, having more bass will help also. Regarding the, the, the drums, they're just a bit too thin and kind of clacky sounding. I think it's a bit of a shame because it sounds a bit too small like that and it's kind of a, you know, it's the kind of part you can have a bit dark and kind of scary sounding. So if you could have percussion that's a bit more organic and a bit less clacky sounding. Like this amount of clack is fine, maybe lower it a bit, but also have some kind of warmth to the percussion as well, not just this. Right now it's just kind of muddy down there, so like... Like hearing more of the bass itself, but not necessarily the mud here. Um, and, and having more of a defined kind of punch going on, and a bit less of that... And... Um, Yeah, the violin here is definitely... It's harsh. And the percussion is just too small. It doesn't carry the bottom of the orchestra. I think you just don't have the right sample because like, the, there's no good punchy content down there. Like There is nothing. Uh, the percussion samples you're using are just not enough. That's like one of the layers and you're completely missing another layer. Because if you are not missing another layer, there would be some kind of punch here. But if you boost this range right now, it's just kind of all blurry. Like without any definition to it. So that's clearly why it's muddy.
because you're missing a layer in the composition, so that's a composition issue. It's a little bit too... Yeah, that's a bit too mid rangey and just kind of washes something and you kind of lack that warmth, both in the bass and low mids, from the low instruments overall. Also make sure that you don't have reverb in the bass. You, f you cut the reverb in the bass. It will help with the bass definition. Or the brass is a bit too mid rangey around like 800 or something. And the choir sounds a bit too EQ'd. And the choir has a harsh... Um, we call this the formant, formant throat resonance. That's like the technical term. It's where the choir has the peak around 3k. You will see it on the EQ if you solo the choir. And that's the throat resonance that all choirs have. And in that case, it's just a bit too forward and making that constant uh, sound, which is important, by the way, you, you need this sound in a choir. It helps it cut through. But uh, if it's a bit too much, it just creates a constant kind of uh, peak of, re of uh, harshness, which can be cut. And uh, also, maybe you're just compressing this uh, too much. But uh, you're definitely missing the low sample. Uh, so, but once you have the low, kind of punchy, bigger sample, make sure you don't compress too much, like you don't uh, limit too much, like keep it around like 2 dB of limiting. Like, depends what limiter you use. If you use Pro-Q2, you can do 3 dB. If you use another one, just use 2 dB. So, and like minimal, kind of 1 dB of uh, glue compression. So you kind of keep all the definition in the base, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's too wide here again. But it's a really cool piece. Uh, just these few issues that kind of make the mix uh, not as good as it could be. But yeah. Uh, all right, guys. So actually, let me see if I have something else. Um, do -do -do -do. Uh, well, guys, uh, if you want me to review one more track, feel free to send it right now. I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have anything else to review, but it's been like one hour and a half, so I probably will take only a few more anyway. But if anyone wants to upload a track, feel free to send it now. Uh, but in the meantime, we can have a discussion about proper mixing and taste. Well, the lines are blurred between proper mixing and taste, but um, usually someone who... If you make a mixing decision that's ba based on taste, you will... How could I explain that? It, it's difficult because there is no rules in music, but there is some level of objectivity obviously in mixing, otherwise people wouldn't hire mixing engineers, right? So there is some level of objectivity and balance, and uh, if you usually show a mixed piece and a piece that's not mixed or that the composer mixed himself and you make, it, you make them choose, they will prefer what the mixing engineer did over their own taste kind of thing. Well, not always, but on most things. Of course, sometimes the mixing engineer will just mess up something and just mix something completely differently in a way that the composer didn't intend. 
and that's not what a mixing engineer should do because he should try to respect the, the taste of the composer to some degree. But I would say the, the role of a mixing engineer is more to adapt what kind of decisions a composer does in a rough mix and kind of understand what kind of his taste. And that would usually be levels mostly because uh, depending on the experience of the composer writing mixing, um, he will set the levels in, in a different way. But regarding frequencies, he won't be so sure. So when it comes to frequencies, of course, there is a part of taste as well. And uh, that can be, you know, there is several things you can do. You can make something darker, you can be something uh, brighter. But at the same time, there is a certain level of objectivity that a mixing engineer can have. And you will find patterns among several mixing engineers that would do the same thing. For example, if a drum, if the track is obviously designed to have a big uh, driving pattern of drums, and it's like a full orchestration, and it's just not punching in the bass. You could say that objectively, it's a shame that you just hear small percussion when uh, you're trying to actually have a heavy percussion there. So, you know, it, it's difficult because then uh, the composer could be like, oh, but I didn't want big percussion there. But it's like, really? If you have a whole orchestra going on, like, is it really that subjective? Like, if you have strings, brass, every, woodwinds, everything, and you have this driving pattern, Nah, you can't have something light sounding with the percussion. It's just not what... I mean, most people, if you give them the choice, they will obviously pick the bigger sounding one. So, you know, like I try to, to take taste in, into consideration. But at the same time, I would say that most people would agree that, for example, soft strings, it can't be harsh. They should, if it's a soft piece with like really piano strings, pianissimo strings, if it's like a sound non-stop, most people would prefer the softer sounding one. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you, yeah, I, I would say like how to develop a... Send, you can send, yeah, send a new track, uh, Fredrik, if you want to. Um, how can you develop a proper mixing with a hiding behind taste? Uh, like, it's hard because there is no shortcut. Just mix and mix and mix and mix. And I think that eventually your taste will, will change. Like, when I started mixing, I did some shit. Like, I did some bad shit. Like, I actually started by making the tracks worse because I cut too much mid-range and I got into this mid-range cutting frenzy. And I just um, removed all the organic elements of the samples. It just sounded thin and you, I just kind of lost everything. <laughs> right? So you can go the other way around and just ruin something with the mix. And then with experience, you just kind of start to realize that, oh, okay, it's actually better if I leave a bit more mid-range in this. It's more organic sounding. Uh, and yeah, look, <laughs> he calls me scoop boy because I scoop the mid-range. That's what I do, I cut the mid-range. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, usually you need to cut some mid-range because orchestral uh, instruments a bit too muddy because it's a big room and it builds up. That's just how it is. So you always cut a bit of mid-range. Um, but the point is, yeah, depending on the track, depending on what you want, you can do more or less. So there is a matter of taste. You can have something that's 2db more scooped in the mid, 2db less scooped. And that's not a right or wrong question. That's a taste question. But uh, yeah, I guess just listen to mixes that you like. I listen to pro mixes and that's how you can develop your own taste, you know, because then you're like, oh, okay, so this guy did that. This guy did that. It's way different. Which one do I prefer? Um, and just try to build your own taste this way. And uh, I would say eventually you will get it right because there are certain things that with experience you can hear and uh, are objectively better. Uh, one thing is like separation, of course. If you hear all the instruments better, it's better than having one instrument masked, you know? Usually when a piece of music is written, you need, to, you need to be able to hear all the instruments separately. That's the point of mixing, having the levels right, having the separation right. But then of course comes the problem of having too much separation. If you have too much separation, then you kind of lose the glueness, the ensembleness of the, the orchestra and everything is just too close sounding because you have too much trouble and you kind of lose the depth, right? If you just separate things too much and go like crazy. So, I would say like the, the too long didn't listen version is <laughs> uh, just learn when to stop to clean up stuff. You're going to have to clean up stuff probably or like cut stuff or boost stuff. 
but you need to stop at a point because if you don't stop, it's gonna start sounding too clinical and just overmixed. And uh, like knowing when to stop and what is taste and what is not taste is just something you can learn naturally by mixing and by listening to other pro mixes and seeing like what's good and what's bad. And uh, yeah, so it's not all subjective. Like if it was all subjective, mixing engineers wouldn't exist. But it's also not all objective. It's kind of a blurry answer, but there you go. Um, yeah, let me see the okay. So Fredericks and a new track. <laughs> Friends curating the nuts. Uh, okay, Frederick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be the last track. So okay. I'm going to close the submissions at uh, 30, so in five minutes. So if anyone wants to send uh, one last track, uh, send it now. Otherwise, I will, I will stop at uh, 30. So uh, let's listen to this. Wait, wait, wait. Is it the same thing? Oh, you're, you already fixed it. Whoa. Oh, that's the first time someone manages to actually like fix it and send it again for a second round of feedback. Congrats. That's some efficiency right there. Wait, is it a different one? Is it? The waveform looks so similar. Did I listen to this before? It's a different track. Oh yeah, I think it, see, I mixed it. I mixed it with another track because the the beginning with the intro, the Brahms and whatever, like it, it's yeah, it, the waveform just looks similar. <laughs> I got confused. Yeah, 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 it's a different track. <laughs> Oh, that's fine, that's fine. No problem at all. It's all fine. Actually, sounds pretty nice. I would say the problem is the woodwinds just sound too close. So if you can just use less close mic on that, or somehow just get, you know, more of a distance going on with the woodwinds. The flute treble especially is a bit too aggressive, so it feels a bit too close, like the very high treble on the flute. And uh, yeah, right there you can see. This is the flute. the composition as well. I think that's the composition as well, but the way the composition interacts, like the, the winds and the violins interact, it's too much in the same area, all the notes that you put, and you end up with a buildup of frequencies on there. So if you can cut that by first kind of spreading maybe the orchestration, kind of reducing the amount of cluster you have here. And if you want to keep this cluster, at least at the base to kind of 
add weight to everything because right now it's just kind of focused around here. It's a bit too... It's just a bit too confused and nasal sounding. I, I would really change. I probably need to remove a few notes and, and like add some clearer baseline harmony just to kind of carry everything because otherwise it's just kind of uh, smeary sounding and you don't get kind of a nice balanced representation of the frequencies uh, due to the arrangement also, but EQs also. Like the basses are just too quiet. All the bassline instruments. Yeah, so if it's supposed to represent dreams, I get the, the clusteriness, that, that's fine, but uh, but at the same time, if you can create kind of bigger, like having a cluster doesn't kind of exclude the fact that you could have a wider kind of uh, sound, uh, frequency re response. So, see, because here you're trying to introduce a bass, I hear it's coming in, right? But it's just to recess something, so if you introduce something... Like, I hear the bass line, right? But if you introduce that bass line, make it more obvious, because otherwise it feels like it's kind of halfway coming in, you, you're not really sure if, if it's supposed to be there. Like overall the progression here is a bit confused as well, like it's an arrangement thing, but maybe change how you build that up, it's a bit confusing somehow. Maybe it's the violin, you know like the violin, the way it's coming in, feels very kind of straight, kind of epic sounding. The violins are a bit, uh, the woodwinds are a bit too dissonant. Like I get the dissonance, like I'm not against dissonance, but uh, uh, yeah, you could probably have a, um, spread everything a bit more and have that kind of dream feeling without having that kind of, um, you know, kind of mess in the one and a half K. Yeah, you need to have the controlled mess, if you know what I mean, regarding the the clusters. It's a bit bit too messy in my opinion. Percussion in the background here could be a bit louder, like the rah, rah, rah. Is it like a marching army sound? Sounds like a, someone, like a marching... Or like some kind of drum. I think it's missing some low brass, it's a bit honky. Yeah. Bit too honky on the brass, trombones and horns, but it's lacking some bottom end from some low brass. Uh, at least make it come during the swell, like in the second half of this thing. Make some low brass come here and uh, amplify it. So it's like lower sound, like have some subbiness to the sound as well. You know, it's just missing all that bottom end. I think it's a, the bassoon is a bit too too honky sounding. Right, it's a bit too resonant here, so you need to cut it. So it's like less resonant. See what I mean? And the violin is a bit too panned and close feeling, so the violin you need to make it a bit more far away sounding. And just less panned because same for the bassoon because it feels like it's out of the stereo image. The brass again very honky. I 
cut the trombones around 800 to 1k and cut the horns usually a bit lower and you will see how much it cleans the stuff. And the sub from the hits is a bit too much. That's uh, like there is if that's really orchestration problems like here you're just lacking harmony right the thing is you you end up with lots of percussion a violin run which is nice and i see what you're trying to do but you're missing the chords you're, you're missing the harmony and what that means is that the track kind of feels atonal doesn't feel very tonal because you're lacking that that's backing harmony right <laughs> Even there. Like sometimes you hear the brass chords, right? But they're very quiet and unnaturally quiet. Uh, much quieter than they should be. And you end up with something that's like without a lot of kind of ha, like a harmony to it. And uh, the, the, it's all a bit washy sounding because of that. Because harmony is gonna add something for your ears to lock to. It's gonna sound a lot more coherent if you have a harmony for your ears to lock to. Because right now it's just like a like a, a noise, you know what I mean? Because you're lacking these chords. Like if you, if you had that uh, brass minor chords more audible under this, like dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. you know whatever harmony. Like you, you can have the harmony build up, like start with like dark sounding trombone chords, like. Uh, like I'm trying to make the third above. Like you can do like a like a C two. Just like it's maybe it's not in C, you know. But like C two, G two, E three. Just an example. Make make these dark, big, wide trumpet chords, and then build up with horns and eventually trumpets. And that way you create. Even if you don't make it fancy, that way you at least you have audible harmony all the way through the final build up, and you actually create some some build-up going on. Because if it's just uh, the percussion and very discreet brass, it just sounds a bit empty sounding, right? Like, the woodwind runs is great, like the string runs, the little violin, it's cool. But you're just lacking that amount of harmony. Like, you, you have it, but it's, it's, too, it's too quiet. Like, we don't really know what's going on. What's, what is the chord change here? If you had like a clear trombone, it would be night and day. Like clear chords. And maybe, maybe you do like a high sizzly trumpet here. Like even higher than this at the octave above the horns. It could be a mixing thing. But I don't think only that, because... Like, here it's a bit confused and I'm not really hearing the, the, the harmony, like, in the writing itself. So I think, yes, obviously the mix is way too quiet in the mix, but I think it's both. But um, try, try to raise everything fast, of course. But I think you're clearly missing at least some low brass. Like you wanna have the, you wanna use the entire brass for this. Like, um, see, of course, there is a matter of taste. Like, I can't just put all my tastes on your composition. But uh, if you look at it, like, how should you write something like that? A final build up, relatively intense thing with woodwind runs going on, percussion going on. You probably want to use all the brass and finish with trumpets, right? That's like what. Probably most people would find pleasing. So what you can make sure you have is tuba, uh, bass, trombones, trombones, horns, and eventually trumpets. So you, you, you start with low brass and trombones, just by itself doing low chords. You, then maybe you add horns around here, and then maybe trumpets at the end. And I think if you do that and you make sure you use all the whole range of the brass from the bass to the treble, 
you're just gonna fill all the frequencies nicely and build up everything nicely and it's gonna go up with the intensity of everything from the bass to the treble and then it's just gonna feel more balanced you know so it's probably both yeah but uh, volume definitely is an issue brass would be much louder uh, in real life so yeah Yeah, exactly. It's not just the volume of one instrument. Like you stack more stuff and it gets more intense, uh, you know. But yeah. I think I should go more into composition things like that when I mix review tracks because like often I get mixes by people and uh, even like my own work and like there is always something that I need to composite for because it's not there in the orchestration, so. I think it's actually very, like the orchestration is very important when it comes to the mix, um, like mixing is like the next step after the orchestration. So, you know, I'm not really like a professional composer. I mean, I make some trailer music, but, uh, but I think by mixing, I can have insight on uh, like when something is missing, I can also see why it's missing. Like if you're missing a certain instrument in a certain range or you're lacking harmony or you have too many instruments in unison, or something like that. Then you feel it in the mix because you end up with a peak, you end up with a build up. And with experience, you can kind of see, oh, why is this building up here? Is it just that the trombones are too washy or is it that I'm missing some, harmon some lower harmony as well? You know, you have this kind of thing. But by mixing a lot of tracks, you kind of start noticing what's better. Like people who, people who really like have a ton of experience orchestrating, you always have like the instruments are just spread so well that you need to do less EQ cuts and boost if that makes sense. Because you, you get a more even sound out of the box if the orchestration is, is better. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying this is bad, this is amazing. Like the, the runs, the woodwind runs, it's just on, on the money, these woodwind runs. Like the mood you created is great, it's just these few orchestration issues. But uh, I love this overall. It's just like, yeah, if you fix that brass, it's gonna be so big, it's gonna be great. Uh, Alright guys, so I think that's gonna be it for the, for the, for the stream, but it was really fun, and uh, yeah, I loved reviewing this track, so as usual I do these mixing feedback streams every second week of the month, well actually this is the, I mean second Sunday of the month, this is the third Sunday because I missed the second one, but I will always announce it, so stay tuned for that, um, but yeah, usually it's the second Sunday of each month. Uh, I was wondering if you can explain the difference between dual mono and stereo for reverbs. Um, okay, so it depends on the plugin, but like stereo is going to kind of take different things into account. Like dual mono, basically, the way a dual mono processing works is that it's processing the each channel separately without really taking the stereo signal into consideration. So it's taking the left signal, adding reverb to that taking the right signal, adding reverb to that, uh, and the stereo reverb will um, take what's on the right and apply reverb to that. So it's going to be a bit high, hard to explain, but basically a stereo processor is going to analyze the whole picture, right? Dual mono is like technically stereo, but like the processing is like independent. So for example, a compressor, a um, dual mono compressor, you're compressing the left channel by itself. It's like you have one compressor on the left, one compressor on the right. Um, a dual mono compressor is like that, so it's like two independent compressors, right? One for the left only, one for the right only. Whereas a stereo compressor, if the right channel is louder than the left and it goes past the threshold, that's going, that's going to be triggering it, right? So for reverbs, I, I would say I'm not completely sure because dual, dual mono reverbs, I mean, I've never seen a dual mono reverb, like it's like a mono reverb or a stereo reverb. And exactly sure, I think it depends on how the coding would be, because they could they could technically make it like read the mono signal and then create a stereo signal after that. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, the point is you probably should use a stereo reverb uh, to get the most natural sound possible. Because dual mono is like stereo, but it's separating the channels as well. So on the compressor, at least I'm sure that for a compressor, it's uh, two separate compressors. So it's like independent compressors between left and right ear. For reverbs, I'm pretty sure it's the same way. I don't see why it would be different. But um, yeah. 
a stereo room when it comes to convolutions. I mean, overall, you probably want to use stereo reverbs, it being convolutions of all algorithmic, because uh, that's how you get a most natural image. But the mono reverb is going to be mono, obviously. Um, it's not going to sound realistic. Just go for the stereo stuff. Don't worry too much uh, about dual mono. Dual mono can be useful mostly for compressors, because then it's like, oh, if you have a choir, and for example, there is a peak, but only the women sound too loud on the right, you want to compress these women only and not touch the men that's on the left or something like that. You, you can sometimes use dual mono compression, compression to just turn down the left channel and not mess with the volume of the right or vice versa, actually. But you get the point. Uh, but yeah, it's not that common to use, I would say. All right, guys. So yeah, that's going to be it for the stream, but uh, I'm glad you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you next time.